Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about eight reasons that you potentially could fail a driver's test. We'll go over those reasons and hopefully with this information you'll be able to pass your driver's test first time. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about eight reasons to pass a driver's test. And I was just making sure I was on the right screen over here because, uh, yeah, it's just kind of crazy. Anyway, so uh, Permaculture's here. My friend Tim is here from Drive Smart BC. If you want to know anything about laws and regulations, road rules here in the province of British Columbia, check out Tim's website, Drive Smart BC. He's got a great forum over there. Lots of great blogs and information for anybody who wants to know anything and be a smarter driver in the province of British Columbia. Katie's here. <coughs> Excuse me. Ben is here. Corey, Bricks for Wheels. Uh, Corey is the moderator. And Corey's here and keeps gets all the great videos that I suggest to you for passing a driver's test. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Blessed is here from Hawaii. Hello, Tyson is here. It's pretty busy tonight, so uh, if I don't get to your question, just retype it, <laughs> say hello again. Uh, I'll get to you, I'll do what I can to uh, help you out. Sanders passed, excellent. Congratulations on passing, that is absolutely awesome. So glad that we can help everybody out. Uh, warmer very recently there in Winterpeg. <laughs> you are most welcome, Tim. Uh, permaculture, hello. And uh, Margaret was having a conversation. My friend Margaret is here from Brooklyn. Ben is here from Winterpeg. Or not Winterpeg, he's from Minnesota, which is the American equivalent of Winterpeg. <laughs> and my friend Goose is here. And uh, Tim is here from Winnipeg as well. And Goose was asking me for some videos on teaching other drivers. And actually this week, that's what I'm going to be doing, is presenting videos on me teaching somebody how to drive in the vehicle. Uh, my friend Gavin here in Vernon uh, was unsuccessful on his first attempt in passing his driver's test. Got in touch with me on the YouTube channel here and I said to him, hey, you know, if you want to do some lessons for his, he's got another test coming up next week on the 2nd of March. And uh, I said, listen, you want to get together and do some videos? If you're willing to do that, then, you know, I'll just give you the lessons and we'll do that. So uh, that's what we're doing. So the first one we did last week and I shot that. I'm going to put that up for Wednesday. That's basically was just kind of an assessment for learning, which was essentially I was just kind of seeing where he was at. Uh, today we went down and did some more videos. We did slow speed maneuvers in the parking lot, working with pylons and those types of things because he wasn't quite comfortable with where the vehicle was in space and place, like where the vehicle was in relation to other things. And he was a little clunky working the steering wheel and whatnot. So I went down and spent an hour with him in the parking lot doing some slow speed maneuvers. So I did that today get that video up for you and then this week uh, we're going out again and what we're going to be working on is lane changes and getting him to come to a complete stop because he kind of almost like uh, like just about there to a, a complete stop <laughs> and then just just like a fraction of a moment before the vehicle actually comes to a complete stop then he goes again so we need to put some concerted effort in getting him to figure out uh, when he's actually coming to a complete stop and the other thing uh, and I'll, I'm going to talk about this actually in the presentation here on eight reasons why you fail a driver's test. Uh, he does those lane changes where he puts on one signal and then just moves over to the next lane. So what we need to do and what all of you need to do who are going for a driver's test, getting ready for a driver's test, is before you make a lane change, mirror signal shoulder check, three flashes on the signal before you move the vehicle laterally because you need one signal to get the attention of other drivers second signal for them to locate you and the third signal for them to take some sort of evasive action whether that's to move back a little bit by taking their foot his or her foot off the throttle and making a bit more space so you can move over and do your lane changes so all of this stuff that i'm working with gavin with and gavin is working towards becoming a better driver and preparing for his driver's test are the same things that you need to work on to pass your driver's test and I know that there's lots of drivers out there that are frustrated by their driver's test and whatnot because preparing and learning how to drive to pass a driver's test is a very different animal 
than driving <laughs> and doing all the things that social drivers do when they drive, you know, not coming to a complete stop at stop signs, driving over painted islands, keeping up with traffic flow, not doing the posted speed limit, all of those types of things. And Corey's put up the video on how to change lane step-by-step -step instructions there, and you can see me actually doing that. And uh, probably next week, I'll have the video for you on Gavin, teaching Gavin how to do that. So uh, that'll really help you out. So without further ado, uh, we're gonna get over to the presentation here. The presentation about 10 or 12 minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll answer any questions you have about driving, passing a driver's test, starting a career as a truck or bus driver, and we'll get you going here. Nikanti, you passed your, you failed your driver's test yesterday, sorry to hear about that, my friend. Uh, what was the reason that they gave you for failing? We'll, we can talk about this a little bit more here uh, in a little bit. Uh, uh, Adrian, I already passed all my tests, just curious, haha. <laughs> okay, excellent. Uh, Santamali, Santamali, I have my test tomorrow, good luck on that. Excellent. And Altafi, you're here from Brooklyn, excellent. And Ben, you're most welcome, my friend. Okay. <laughs> yes, tailgaters. Yes. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Yes, I agree with you on tailgaters, but we'll talk about all of that as well. All right, so over to the presentation here. Eight reasons you can fail your driver's test. First impressions. You've, For those of you who've been here for a little while, have heard me talk, talk about first impressions before. You know, make sure you are got nice clothes on, not ripped jeans, those types of things. Uh, you know, because driving examiners are influenced by this. Uh, I was talking to somebody last week about we have one driving examiner here in Vernon who's ex-military. And, uh, you know, I used to go down there with some of my students who, you know, had piercings and had tattoos and those types of things. And uh, they were really up against it because he took a little bit of, there was a bit of bias in terms of that. So make sure that you have all of that in place, you go down and you wash your car, you clean your car out, give it a vacuum, get all the wrappers and food wrappers and those types of things out of the foot wells and whatnot. You know, brush your hair, put some nice clothes on, those types of things uh, when you go down for your driver's test because you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. All right, over at the Smart Drive Test website, we have the Smarter Driver course, uh, passed your driver's test first time. It also includes the defensive driving and winter driving courses. And yes, even those of you who are in Texas <laughs> need the winter driving course. So that's on special for $37.95. All three courses are included. Have a look at that over there. For those of you who might be new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. I was a truck driver through most of the 1990s. I became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. So I've been doing this for more than two decades now. Uh, 2006. Uh, I graduated from the University of Melbourne in Australia with a doctorate in legal history because I was fascinated with the question of do people obey traffic laws because they fear them or they respect them. So <laughs> make up for women, Ben. No, we don't say make up for women because not all women wear makeup as Margaret has reminded us. <laughs> Watch the video from last week. We had a comment about makeup and Margaret last week, which is pretty funny. All right, and while I was going to university in Australia, I drove buses for Greyhound as well. So uh, you can check out my full autobiography over on the Smart Drive Test website. So have a look at that. This week, 40% uh, of crashes happen here. Um, Margaret says, if someone fails you because they don't like the way you look, they should not be giving the test. Yes, that's true, Margaret, but unfortunately, that's not the way that our world works. <laughs> uh, we have bias. And it's just, it's just a matter of course, unfortunately. Uh, I don't like it any more than you do. So, uh, Goose is here, my friend. Okay, uh, I'll go over it after I get done here, Goose, with the presentation. So, 40% of crashes happen here. This was the new video last week. I went over intersections, defining intersections, what you need to be looking for, and reminding you that intersections are not conventional two roads crossing, two roads meeting intersections, what we think in our head. So, I went over that. Have a look at that video if you haven't seen it already. All right, number eight. The reason that you will fail your driver's test is you don't have good control of the steering wheel to brake the throttle. For those of you in other parts of the world driving manual transmissions, the clutch, and you don't know where your vehicle is in space and place. And this is with Gavin, who I've been working with this week and shooting videos with. Uh, this is where he's at. He's got all the pieces in place. He can drive the vehicle through traffic and those types of things. He can do the turns and those types of things but it's a bit clunky. 
it's just part of the learning process. So this is the reason that I went down and did slow speed maneuvers in a closed circuit area with Gavin to try and smooth some of this out. And in the next lesson, we're really gonna work on this. I'm gonna demonstrate to what he needs to do to pass his driver's test and get these pieces in place. But if you don't have these pieces in place where your steering is not, you don't look comfortable, uh, you got kind of jerky throttle motion and those types of things, it indicates to the examiner that you simply haven't practiced enough. You haven't had enough wheel time and they're probably not gonna give you your license because it's it's not quite there you're not quite comfortable you don't know why your shoulder checking you don't know what you're looking for or, or you just don't have enough uh you don't have enough knowledge about hazards and hazard potential hazards on the roadway so this is what all of this indicates to the examiner all right number seven is lane positioning uh you're not centered in the lane so you don't move to the right after making a turn uh, a left hand turn uh, so make sure that when you're turning on multi-lane roads it's left to left and right to right okay merging lanes you're not moving over prior to the end of that lane you're getting to the end and getting caught out and those types of things you're not communicating effectively and you're not coming to a complete stop for emergency vehicles so know that for the purposes of a driver's test an automatic fail is not stopping for an emergency vehicle for the purposes of your driver's test uh, if you want to see the video on lane changing which I put up there uh, just scroll back up in the comments there. Corey's put that up for you already on uh, lane changing and how to do that correctly for the purposes of passing your driver's test. Now, number six ties into number eight with being too cautious. You don't have good control of the primary controls, the steering wheel, the brake, and the throttle. And you're simply too cautious. You're not going when the gap presents itself because you're not sure. Uh, and you're not doing this, the posted speed limit because you don't you think that driving lower than the posted speed limit is going to make you safer when in fact it makes you even more unpredictable and even more of a risk on the roadways. So too cautious again indicates to the examiner that you don't have enough experience driving the vehicle. You just don't have enough wheel time behind the vehicle. So you need to go out practice your slow speed maneuvers if you can't if you don't have an area i know for some people like margaret and others who live in brooklyn new york there just aren't empty parking spaces around that you can go and do these kinds of things so you know even backing along a curb is going to help you out in terms of figuring out where your vehicle is in space and place and will give you better control of the primary controls the brake the throttle and the steering wheel so just do that if you don't have space to go and work in a parking lot and have that luxury of uh, spending a concerted amount of time doing your slow speed maneuvers number five is observation shoulder checking if you're not shoulder checking correctly for the purposes of a driver's test two times for a turn two times for lane changes two times for every time that you're moving the vehicle sideways that's that's just an automatic fail on a driver's test you're just you're simply not going to be successful shoulder checks are absolutely critical for per passing a driving test. You have to have a forward scanning pattern in place that includes looking far down the road, monitoring your gauges, your center mirror, and your wing mirrors. And when you're reversing, you have to look out the back window. You can't use your backup camera. You can't use your wing mirrors. You have to be looking out the rear window as your primary line of sight. And even if you have a big vehicle like a van or a pickup truck or whatnot, and you can't see out the back window, just fake it, okay? Uh, just look at your backup camera use your wing mirrors those types of things uh you can back up but you still kind of need to look out the back window all right so observation is number five if you're not observing correctly you're not going to be successful on your driver's test number four is road signs you're not observing road signs you're not taking in the information from the road signs and you're not adjusting your driving according to the road signs for example failing to adjust your speed according to speed signs and you know working with gavin there's a road here in vernon that on kalamalka lake road that is a 40 kilometer an hour zone i've been down there well i've lived here six years now and never noticed that 40 kilometer an hour sign i've been down that road quite a number of times so the the point of that story was that it's it, you have to practice in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test so you know where speed where the speed changes so that you can adjust accordingly 
know where stop signs are, know where lane in signs are, school zones, know whether they're actually school zones. We have a, a high school here just around the corner from where I live. Lots of drivers drive down in front of that school and they slow down to 30 kilometers an hour. There is no speed sign down in front of that school. Okay, road markings, railway crossings, you need to know the road signs in and around the area where you're going to be taking your test and drive accordingly. Number three, and these tend to be automatic fails on a driver's test, turning, parking, and maneuvering. Seven-eighths of a driver's test is in a forward motion. One-eighth is the parking maneuvers, slow speed maneuvers. It's the one-eighth that gives students the most grief. However, if you want the kind of 2080, if you want to put 20% of your effort into your driving and get 80% out, focus on your slow speed maneuvers. I know that they're not sexy. No, they're not sexy at all. But if you spend 20% of your time doing slow speed maneuvers, backing up along a curb, doing your parallel parking, doing your three point turns, reverse stall parking, backing into a parking space, then you're going to get 80% out because that concerted effort on your slow speed maneuvers is going to improve your overall driving. So do those, do your parking, three point turns and whatnot. Number three, if you strike a fixed object, for example, they tend to have concrete barriers at the back of the parking spaces in the DMV centers where you're going to be taking your test. If you strike that concrete barrier at the back of the parking space, that's an automatic fail on a driver's test. So it's better to be out a little bit and get a couple of demerit points than it is to be too close and smack that concrete barrier. That's an automatic fail. Anything you strike on a driver's test is an automatic fail. We can talk about other automatic fails on a driver's test. So dangerous actions is number two. You're blocking an intersection. You drive into an intersection that you can't clear. Be careful of T intersections where they meet main roads. If you are on the main road and you drive up in front of that T intersection and you block that side street, you're blocking an intersection. And it's up to the discretion of the examiner whether he or she will fail you automatically, okay? Backing up at an intersection. Never do this, even on, whether regardless if it's a driver's test or otherwise, never ever back up in, a, in an intersection. <clears throat> you have insufficient gap on a left-hand turn or a right-hand turn, and any time that the examiner intervenes in your driving, all of these are dangerous actions, and any dangerous action is going to be an automatic fail on your driver's test. Another automatic fail on a driver's test is if you drive through an intersection on a yellow light, the examiner looks up through the top of the windshield as you're proceeding through the intersection and the light turns red. That's an automatic fail on a driver's test. And number one, the number one reason that drivers fail driving tests is because they don't know what's on the test. <clears throat> they haven't taken the time to go out and drive around the test center where they're gonna be taking their test. They don't know whether it's parallel parking out on the road between one car, behind one car, between two vehicles, if they're gonna be parallel parking with cones, uh, if they're gonna be doing the Ohio maneuverability test, if you leave in, live in the state of Ohio, <laughs> you can bet that you're gonna, you have to pass the Ohio maneuverability test. And the part that sucks about the state of Ohio is if you do the Ohio maneuverability test, you bang one of the cones on the Ohio maneuverability test, that's an automatic fail, and you have to take an online course and pay 30 or $40 to do that course and then you can take your license again. So know what's on the test. And if you aren't taking driving instruction lessons with a driving instructor, then I counsel you to hire a driving school to take a mock road test for the purposes of passing your driver's test. The return on investment is really, really high. So do that, all right? So again, consider pass your driver's test first time. The Smarter Driver course over at the Smart Drive Test website. Corey put the link up here. Also included is the winter driving and the defensive driving courses. The winter driving course for anybody who doesn't get winter, except Texas, of course. They used to think they didn't get winter. You know, the Carolinas, Virginia, Arizona, places like that. The winter driving course is excellent for any, all of those skills and techniques that I teach you in the winter driving course can be used in any kind of inclement weather. Rain, sleet, fog, hail, driving in forest fire, smoke, and those types of things. So it's a really good course. Even if you don't get snow, it will still help you out to drive in inclement weather. All right, so good luck on your driver's test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. 
So what we'll do is we'll come back over here and we'll answer any questions you have about driving, about passing a driver's test, anything that you're having trouble with, we can point you in the right direction in terms of information and those types of things. So my friend Goose is here. Uh, he says, yesterday while teaching, I just noticed the lack of yield signs where there ought to be one, despite going through there day after day for a few decades. <laughs> yeah, that happens, Goose. Uh, <clears throat> Nikanti thinks there's too many 30 kilometer an hour zones in the province of British Columbia. <laughs> yes, I, nah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Ben, I did practice low speed maneuvers a lot while I was learning to drive. Excellent. Uh, what is before the gap? Uh, not sure what before the gap is, but uh, judging the gap when you're making turns, lane mergers, those types of things, you have to be able to determine if the gap is big enough for you to execute your maneuver without getting crossing the path of travel and, and forcing another driver to uh, take evasive action while you're driving. Uh, Kirsten, additionally, when the green advanced turn arrow is on and it's paired with a regular red light or a green light, what do these mean in Canada for the traffic going straight? Thank you. I'm just thinking about that, Kirsten, because I can't quite envision what you're talking about. So usually, Kirsten, the way that advanced green lights work is, is that on highly complex intersections, if you've got two lanes of traffic turning left and they're going like this, so the advanced green on each side of the intersection will be on and then the through traffic will be stopped while those two left turning lanes are turning, okay? So that will be an advanced green. The other way that you'll get advanced greens is, is that you'll get a green light, you'll get the through traffic on your side going and then you can turn left and the traffic on the other side through traffic will be stopped. That's, I can't think of really any other way that advanced green lights work unless you're in a huge metropolitan area and they have uh, lights for buses and trams as well. That's, that's kind of another configurate as, configuration as well. Okay, so Margaret, you need some help changing lanes. All right. Uh, what is it, Margaret, that you're having problems with in terms of changing lanes, okay? Um, Jose, hello. Obasan, uh, 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 should one yield to a vehicle on the left in an uncontrolled intersection in Alberta? Should one yield to, an in, to a vehicle on the left? Left, where's left? Left is over there at an uncontrolled intersection. No, you shouldn't. If, if you're on a main road, and there's minor roads off on either side of the main road, those vehicles will be facing a control. So you're not gonna yield to those vehicles. Okay. Uh, what do you do when you get a yield sign stop and there is a pedestrian? Uh, pedestrians have the right of way, so you have to wait for the pedestrian to go. When the pedestrian reaches halfway across the next lane, then you can proceed. Okay. Uh, Sky, can you help me understand? Uh, can you help me understand four-way stops? Or Jose, can you help me understand four-way stops? Yeah, Corey will put the video up for you on four-way stops. There's a new video up there, uh, Corey, that uh, you can put up there for him. Uh, Margaret, scared of merging into the next lane. All right, uh, Margaret, was this something that you're working with your driving instructor with that you were just so you're you just got some trepidation around moving into the next lane okay uh, boy I don't do driving lessons per se most of my driving lessons are here online but you can consider the pass your driver's test uh, course over at the smart drive test website and you have complete access to me to ask me any questions you have about driving or whatnot we'll definitely do what we can to help you out Joseph, uh, what do yield on green left turns mean exactly? I'm confused about what it means. I'm from Maryland, uh, but it seems Canada and America has a lot of the similar. Yeah, they do, uh, Joseph. Uh, okay, yield on a green left turn. Uh, Joseph, do you have an intersection where you could send me an address and I could have a look at that on Google for you? I'd be able to give you better information. Uh, rick at smartdrivetest.com and I'll be able to look at that for you. Uh, Sky, can you use side mirrors when backing up in California? Uh, Sky, you can use mirrors when you're backing up in California, but you cannot use them as your primary line of sight. You still have to look out the back window. So basically what I tell students is to kind of back up one vehicle length, a vehicle length and a half, 
check your mirrors and then look out the back window back up again check your mirrors you know intermittently check your mirrors but you can't use your mirrors as your primary line of sight okay uh margaret they just started having me change lanes recently and i get anxious okay uh margaret that's not that's not unusual okay if you're learning how to change lanes and you've got some anxiety around changing lanes ch changing lanes is tough okay because you're you're in a moving vehicle and you know you've got to move the vehicle sideways so this is kind of the basis of changing lanes and, and you're not alone margaret in having challenges with this all new drivers have challenges with changing lanes i had a young woman some years ago uh, when i first came to bc who i was teaching how to drive and i said to her make a lane change she was like no <laughs> no 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 <laughs> so we kind of had to work into that a little bit after that that i realized that there was she just did not want to make a lane change uh so yeah you're not alone one of the one of the keys for changing lanes and i can understand especially in brooklyn because it's pretty intimidating and i mean uh when i drove truck in new york there in the 1990s my thing was you know i put three flashes on and once i had three flashes then i started coming over so you need to know that other people will help you out despite what people say that people oh, people won't move over we live in la we live in dallas we, you know we live in tampa people people won't let you in I promise you, for any of you here watching tonight, when you put your signal on, you leave your signal on, and you start crowding that left side of the lane, people will move over. I promise you. I guarantee you people will move over. People will let off the throttle. People will give you a space. Because they're not going to risk you running into them. So, minimum three flashes on the signal. This is what I tell people in terms of changing lanes. And that is the key to changing lanes effectively. Mirror signal, shoulder check, put your signal on. One flash, two flash. You're looking down the road, so we're on two flashes. Shoulder check again, and then on the third signal, then you start to move over if the way is clear. As well, in the mirror, the wing mirror, the vehicle behind you has to be in the top third of the mirror for there to be enough space beside you to be able to move over effectively into that other lane. The other key to lane changing well is that you have to speed up as you're moving from one lane to the other because you're increasing the amount of space because you're moving on an angle. You have to speed up to keep the same speed as you're moving across it. Now, I'm not saying like floor it. I'm just saying speed up a little bit to maintain the same speed as you're moving over. And Try not to hesitate, okay? You just move over and leave your signal on until you're completely in the other lane and then turn your signal off when you're done and then just carry on with your life. It's a bit easier. I know it's tough probably in Brooklyn because you can't get on on any main kind of roads where it's, there's not gonna be a lot of traffic, but I don't know whether, Margaret, you might have a, an opportunity to get out maybe earlier in the morning or later at night when there's not as much traffic around because I know that it can be very intimidating if there's a lot of traffic. And for you getting up there on the BQE, you know, I don't know whether that might be an option for you early in the morning or later in the afternoon when there's less traffic, because sometimes it might even be easier to learn how to lane change when you're on the interstate as opposed to on a main road and those types of things where there's just all the craziness of, you know, metropolitan cities going on with you. So, uh, yeah, I don't know whether you've seen the video already, Margaret, but we'll, we'll carry on with that, okay? All right, Bryson, uh, if my test is in May, what do you suggest I do now? So Bryson, just what I'm suggesting you do right now to practice getting ready for your driver's test in May is just to drive as many vehicles as you can. And I would say you do that until the end of March and then April and into May, just stick with the same vehicle, stick with the same mentor. But until the beginning of April for kind of the next seven weeks, just do as much driving as you can, get as many different vehicles as you can with, you know, as many different people as you can and that will really help you out uh trude it will be okay when you get used to it okay all right uh dc is it okay to turn left on a yellow red light if you're already past the crosswalk and traffic comes to a stop uh dc when you're making a left hand turn and you're sitting there waiting and you're you've got your front steer tires on the front crosswalk line if you can kind of tell when the light's going to go to yellow because there's going to be less traffic at the intersection but what you need to do is as soon as that light goes yellow you need to start moving forward into the intersection because the traffic on the other side of the intersection is going to come to a stop so you can't be passive right 
and I've had this question from other smart drivers as well, that if you put your front steer tires in the front crosswalk line and the light goes to yellow and the light goes to red, uh, if the light's yellow, you should not be there anymore. Okay, as soon as that light goes yellow, you need to move forward into the intersection. You need to be being proactive to clear the intersection as expediently as possible. And you do that by moving straight into the intersection and gaining a bit of speed. When you're sure, double sure and triple sure that the traffic on the other side of the intersection has come to a stop, clear the intersection. That's what you need to do, okay? Uh, Margaret, most of the lessons are in the late afternoon as per New York road rules. I'm not allowed to drive on the BQE with just a learner's permit. Not even with, uh, you, Margaret, you're not even allowed on the BQE with a, with a driving instructor? Is that, tr is that right? Because I hadn't heard that rule before, that's why I'm asking. All right, excellent, excellent. Okay, Bryson, if my license test is in May 18th, what do you suggest I do to ensure I pass? I drive a lot with my parents on interstates and city roads. I'm taking my test in a full-size SUV. Also, do you have any tips? All right, uh, Bryson, uh, Corey, if you could put up the video on parallel parking in a big truck, that will get Bryson going there in terms of a bigger vehicle. Uh, and that will definitely help you out. But sort of Bryson, if your test is on the 18th of May, just keep doing what you're doing until uh, the beginning of April. And then once you get into the beginning of April, then really you know, stick with the same vehicle, stick with the same mentor, take your driving lessons. You know, If you're gonna do a few driving lessons and just do what you can. Uh, and, and you know, But until then, just keep doing what you're doing and getting as much driving experience as you can, okay? Jose, on a four-way stop, if two cars get there at the same time at the stop sign on opposite sides of each other, and one wants to go left and the other car wants to go left as well, who goes first? Uh, if two vehicles, Jose, are at the intersection on either side of each other and they're both going to go left, they can both go at the same time because one's going to be here and one's going to be here, and they're going to miss each other. So if there's two vehicles on either side of the four-way stop that are turning left at the same time, they can both go at the same time. Okay. Uh, do -do -do -do. How many seconds needed to look in mirrors when you are on the highway? Okay, so you just you're not looking in the mirror, you're glancing in the mirror. So you're looking far down the road in glance your mirror, uh, looking forward. Okay, because make sure that you keep your eyes on in the front of the vehicle what's going on there. But it's just a glance in the mirror. I think that's what you're asking me. Okay, uh, Sky, I'm taking my test in my mom's Porsche Cayenne. It's really easy to move her, but when I stop and go again, it goes fast it, uh, because it has a lot of power. Will I get a point marked off for this? <laughs> uh, Sky, you're gonna need to control that, okay? I know, I know, it's, I know it's got a lot of oomph, but uh, you, need to, you need to feather the throttle a little bit more instead of just tromping on that. And what I might suggest to you is to go and get some pylons and work in a parking lot to get control of that throttle, get control of that brake so that you don't have that hard acceleration when you take off. Uh, because this is one of the points that I was talking about, actually it was point number eight, about smooth control of the primary controls, the steering wheel, the throttle, and the brakes. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to figure that out before your driver's test, okay? Evan, if you're asked to parallel park and you can only parallel park almost perfectly, is that a fail? If you don't correct it, I'm sure the car shall be uh, parallel as possible. Uh, Evan, you know, if you're, 15 inches from the curb, you're a little bit far from the curb, you're not gonna fail for that. You're gonna lose a couple of points. And what I say to people is if you get it in the space and it's kinda in there, but it's a little bit crooked, take the couple of demerit points. Don't start messing around with it because you're already nervous, you're already tense, right? And if you try to straighten it out, you try to do that, then you could potentially risk failing your driver's test because you might strike the curb. If you get it in there and it's kinda crooked and you lost a couple of demerits because it's not it's a little bit far away from the curb or whatnot. Just forget it and carry on with your life is what I what I would say to you, okay? Uh, Margaret, my driving school won't take students on the highway. Highway driving lessons is only after you have your license. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so it's not, it's not, so basically I think what I was asking Margaret is, is it's not a state policy that regulates driving schools. It's just a policy of the driving school that they won't take you on the interstate, which is weird because it's actually safer to drive on the BQE than it is to drive in Brooklyn. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's why we have interstates. That's why they're, you know, what they are. So anyway, 
Uh, Joseph, for road markings, they explain how they work, uh, then state also used in advance of the obstructions that may be passed on either side, right edge lines and right lines and intersection approaches. Okay, Joseph, I'm not following you. Uh, Joseph, you need to send that to me in an email and you need to send me the page of your state DMV uh, driver's handbook because then I would be able to look at it and give you the exact information that you need because just from that I can't I can't give you a good answer that I can <laughs> can't give you the right answer okay uh, sky when changing multiple lanes on a freeway can I use my blinker and change all the lanes at once or do I need to put my blinker on and change one lane at a time okay excellent question sky and this is a question we get now and again uh, if you're moving more than one lane so say you're gonna move three lanes so you're in this lane you're gonna go to this lane and you're gonna go to this lane so what you do and some driving instructors will tell you different. They will tell you to turn your blinker off and turn it back on. And I'm, I'm like, why? Just leave it on. You're going to move to the next lane anyway. So when you do that, just put your signal on. You know, normal lane change, right? We're moving from this lane to two lanes over there. Move into the next one. Pause. Say two flashes on the signal. Pause. Check. Do all your checks again, your verifications, and then move over to the third lane. So you just move from one to the next and just pause in each lane as you move across and just leave your signal on the whole time. And then people behind you will know what you're doing for the purposes of changing multiple lanes at a time. Okay, uh, boy, NBC, am I gonna be driving on the highway for my road test uh, for my N or is it just in the city? Uh, it's Well, first of all, it's gonna depend where you're taking your driver's test at what test center, how close they are to a roadway because in some places, if they're close to a roadway, they may take you on the road. Uh, if they're not close to a roadway, they're not going to take you on a road. So it's really going to depend. Uh, for the three-point turn during the road test, when I'm backing up, do I keep looking at the back or just checking the back before I start backing up is fine? Uh, no. Anytime that you're reversing, Corey will put the video up for you on reversing, you need to be looking out the rear window. Okay? So when so you come around, you pulled up, you're at the curb on the far side of the road, you're gonna back up over that way. So what you're, so the car is gonna go in this direction. So it's gonna go in this direction to back up for, you, for the last part of your three-point turn. You're gonna put your signal on, you're gonna look out the rear window. As the vehicle comes around, when you get near the end of it, you can look out the side window because the back end of the car is over there. So you can look out here. Put your left signal on, check your path of travel, do your verifications, make sure there's nobody coming, and then pull out and complete your three-point turn is how that's done. Uh, Colin, my friend. Okay, that's what you're saying. Uh, Epic, I'm confused on how to treat a protected left turn signal with arrow off. Uh, do we treat it as a conventional left turn junction or not? Uh, stalling in CDL test is a failure. Saw this from Driving Academy, New Jersey. Stalling in a CDL test is a failure. Uh, Epic, are, do you mean that you're, you stall the big truck? Is that what they mean? That they stall the truck that does an automatic fail on a driver's test? That's not true. Okay, you can stall a big truck. Say you're climbing a hill or whatnot. You can stall it. But what happens with most students when they stall a big truck is, is that it rolls backwards. They fail because they roll backwards. They don't fail because they stalled the truck. If they prevent the truck from rolling backwards and they start it up again and they get going again up the hill, They'll lose demerits, but that's not a fail. Most drivers fail stalling a big truck on a road test and fail the driver's test because when they stall it, it rolls backwards. And that's the reason they fail, not because of the stalling. Uh, Goose, yeah, keep your signal on to change lanes multiple times, but do your verification before changing lanes uh, each. I lost you. <laughs> there you are. Uh, changing lanes each time, one at a time. Exactly, yes. Excellent. Kirsten, I feel like I'm really uneven with the gas while doing left turns. Uh, Kirsten, and that might just come from a little bit of practice of going back and revisiting slow speed maneuvers in the parking lot. That might really help you out. The other thing that uh, I find happens, causes that, is that you're kind of uneven with the throttle on your left hand turn is because you don't, you're not quite sure where you're going. You're not kind of sure what you're aiming for. The other thing that might help you with that, Kirsten, is to box the intersection a little bit more. So what I mean by that is drive straight into the intersection and then turn. Okay, so instead of doing this curvy thing around on your left-hand turn, drive straight in and then turn. 
okay? You might find that that helps you to smooth the throttle out a little bit on your left-hand turns. Uh, Jordani, uh, I take my road test in August. I'm, I'm taking it in Newark. Uh, I should start driving school now or wait till August 1st to start taking the road test on the 17th. Uh, Jordani, I would probably recommend that you just get as much driving practice between now and kind of the middle of July. And then once the middle of July comes around, then start taking a, a few driving lessons and see how you're doing at that time to start getting ready for your driver's test, okay? Okay, Tim, thank you so much. Have a great night, my friend. Enjoy dinner. Uh, excellent. Bryson, do you recommend a stick shift for high schoolers? A lot of my friends want a stick shift, but I am not sure if that is what would be best for me. Also, do you recommend sedans or SUVs for teens? Uh, Bryson, a stick shift is good after you get your license. I wouldn't recommend that you take your driver's test in a manual transmission in North America. Just do it in automatic, and then after you get your driver's license, then go and buy a stick shift. And I, I'm whole, I'm wholly for, I'm completely for stick shifts. I drive a manual transmission. I absolutely love it. So do that, okay? Uh, I have a road test on Friday here in Georgia. Joel Rick, uh, excellent. So you're going to do well on that in Georgia. Excellent. They're in the peach state and good luck on that. Drop us a note if you need any help with that on Friday. That's going to be great. Uh, Jose, would you recommend a single cab truck as a first truck for a 16 year old? Uh, yeah, Jose, if you can get a hold of a single cab truck, that's going to do well for you. Uh, I'm not a big fan of pickup trucks as kind of your first vehicle because pickup trucks are not, you know, they're they're just not as stable on the road as a car is, especially a front wheel drive vehicle. But if that's what you're gonna get, then yeah, a, a single cab pickup truck will be much better for you. <clears throat> uh, frequent drivers, uh, are you talking about night driving, Nakani? Uh, you'd let me know about that. Okay, if I am backing up out from an angle parking of a parking lot to the left, uh, but I'm going to the right, where should I signal to? Uh, you signal in whichever direction the back of the vehicle is going to, okay? So if the back of the vehicle is going that way, then signal that way. If the back of the vehicle is going that way, then signal that way, okay? That's the direction you're gonna signal, okay? Uh, Okay, Colin, sorry I missed it. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm always nervous when driving on the highway. It's the speed, it's not, it's the speed I'm fine with driving that speed or faster. In other words, what could be causing this problem? Uh, okay, so Colin, so when you're driving on the highway or the freeway, what is your fear? Okay, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid that you're gonna crash or are you afraid that you're going to get in somebody else's way. You're afraid that somebody's gonna honk at you. You're afraid that somebody's gonna give you the finger. Uh, what is it that you that causes your anxiety? Because there's always something that causes our anxiety, right? You, are you afraid that you might spin out? Uh, those types of things. What is it that gives you anxiety? Because if I can kind of figure out what it, what's the reason for your anxiety, then I can, kind of, I can help you a little bit more. Uh, you're most welcome, my friend, okay? Thanks for the help, Rick. Uh, your videos really helped me be prepared for the driver's test. That's awesome, so glad we can help out. Okay, uh, Paco, uh, when you get to a four-way, who has the right of way? Okay, so best to have a look at the video. Corey, put that back up there. Have a look at the links, or go on the website and just type in stop sign playlist and uh, search the playlist, and there's a whole playlist on two-way stop signs, four-way stop signs, how to come to a complete stop and those types of things. So that'll really help you out uh, with that. Okay, Jason, I think the driving schools need to teach more on winter driving. Uh, they do. <laughs> the problem with that, Jason, is, is that they need to get paid and this is and most of their work is really about teaching drivers how to pass a driver's test. So there's not a lot of information on that. But I did notice with the snow in Texas that my winter driving videos got a lot more views in the last couple of weeks here. So yeah. Uh, Jose, what do you think the main reason is that teens are afraid to drive? Because I think it's all the mentality. Jose, it's just inexperience. And I think the other piece with all of this is that 
you know, with the amount of bureaucracy in place for, for young people to get a license now and the cost of insurance and whatnot, you know, all of this creates a lot of fear around something that in, in actual fact with a little bit of training and a little bit of knowledge, you can be quite safe driving and driving is a lot of fun. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. So, you know, in the beginning, you know, it's going to be a bit tough, but you know, with a bit of practice after a few months, six months, a year, it's going to be a lot of fun and you're just going to really enjoy driving. Okay. Once you get past all that other stuff. Okay, Colin, it's hard to tell because I'm fine with going 100 or 120. I'm fine with driving beside trucks on the other roads. Maybe it's just the mix of it all together. Okay, so yeah, that makes sense. The All of the stuff that's going on on the roads and highways and those types of things. So, uh, Colin, have you had a look at the fear and anxiety video and some of the tips and techniques in there that can help you out? Uh, you know... If you haven't had a, had a look at that video, Corey will put that up for you on fear and anxiety. Have a look at that, and that may help you with some of the stuff in terms of highway driving. As well, there's a video I put up a couple of months back on uh, defensive driving tips for driving on the highway. Have a look at that as well, and that may help you out uh, with some of your anxiety around driving on the roads and whatnot. Okay. Uh, Epic, I have the opportunity to take the road test for a fourth attempt. Do you recommend a driving school road test complete with a review or not in order to prevent a cr critical error in the road test? Uh, Epic, anytime that you can get feedback from people, from driving instructors, then I really recommend that you do that before taking your driver's test. That will really help you out, my friend. Okay. Uh, Margaret, driving schools here will cancel classes if it's snowing. They do classes in the winter, but if there is a lot of snow piled up, you won't do any parking or any three-point turns on those days. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Margaret, that's not surprising because, I mean, as a rule, New York City doesn't get a lot of snow anyway, do they? I, I, it seems that this year they have gotten an inordinate amount of snow in, the, in New York City and other places that usually don't get snow, <laughs> okay? Uh, Pink Bubble, if I'm making a right turn and there is a pedestrian crossing, should I wait till they get to the sidewalk on the other side? Also, am I allowed to creep or should I stay behind the line? Okay, so if you've got pedestrians, you need to wait for the pedestrian to either attain the concrete island or the footpath. If you're like, I, I don't know, Pink Bubble, whether you're in a slip lane or you're just turning at a, at a corner at a right turn. What I would suggest you and what will give you more information, and Corey will get the video up for you on pedestrians, uh, that will really help you out in terms of where you need to be in terms of pedestrians at crosswalks and intersections and those types of things. That'll give you much more information and maybe answer your question, okay? And if it doesn't answer your question, again, send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com, and I'll do my best to help you out. And for all of you, <laughs> uh, I'm extremely busy right now. I've got a couple of contracts with companies. Uh, so I'm doing a lot of stuff right now. If I don't get back to you, you're not bugging me if you send me another email. You're not bugging me if you send me another uh, Facebook message or whatnot. It's just, I'm busy. I'm really busy. I'm trying my best to help you out. Uh, but, you know, it, it <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little tough some days. But I'm doing my best, so you're not bugging me. Just send me a reminder and say, hey, Rick, can you get me an answer back? Okay, so do that, and it'll be really great. Okay, trucking. Uh, it's been on night work for the last few weeks. Sorry I missed your live stream, but it's really great. No, it's really great uh, trucking that you're here uh, and that you dropped in to say hi. Awesome. So it's, I'm glad to hear that you're working, though, during all the craziness in the world. Uh, Dan, um Class one instructor in Winnipeg, love using your videos in my classroom. Thank you for all you do. And Dan, you're most welcome. And uh, as well, Dan, this year I am putting a concerted effort in doing CDL videos. So I'm really hoping by May, I, or not by May, <laughs> May's too far away, uh, that by March I'm going to get this going. I've, I've actually uh, got a camera person lined up, somebody with a drone that can help me out and do some of these videos with the big trucks and those types of things. So we're gonna get going on that uh, very soon here. I'm looking, I'm, ve I'm very excited about that. Okay, uh, Peter just made my class seven learners last week because of your videos. Peter, that is absolutely awesome. Thank you for stopping back and letting us know. Congratulations on that. That's really great. 
Okay, and Corey's put up the video on how much space between your vehicle and pedestrians. Thank you for that, Corey. That's awesome. Pearson, a uh, few hundred kilometers north in Montreal. My school has no weather cancellation policy. You're expected to drive rain or shine. Yeah, <laughs> very different kind of driving attitude, Pearson, there in Montreal as opposed to in uh, in Brooklyn, for sure. And I was just seeing if uh, Margaret had answered my question about the snow this year because it seemed like New York got a lot of snow. Uh, maybe somebody else can answer that question as well. It's not just Margaret. Uh, Bobby, Rick, when you back into the stall at the test center, is the examiner looking for you to be perfectly centered in the stall or do they just want you to be in between the lines? Bobby, they just want you to be in between the lines. That's all. Okay, if you're not straight, don't kill yourself trying to get it straight. Okay, just as long as you're in, be if you're in between the lines and the, the car's a little bit crooked, that's that's a go. That's a that's a win. <laughs> okay, because you're already nervous, you're already kind of anxious doing your test and those types of things. So just get it in there. That's that's the best. Okay, uh, Sonali, when is the best time to get in a left lane to turn left? Excellent question, Sonali. Any time that you have a turning lane, turning to the left, turning to the right, whatever it is, get in as soon as possible, okay? As soon as the lane starts, get into that lane, okay? So do that. Get into the turning lane as soon as possible. So the left turning lane, get into the left turning lane as soon as it starts. Uh, Margaret, this year, too much snow here. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. I thought that New York City got a lot more snow than they usually do, so... Uh, ben, are Hondas a good winter car for Minnesota? Uh, ben, my 1998 Honda CRV, that vintage of Honda CRVs, the 1997s all the way to the 2003s, in my personal opinion, having owned two of them now, they are the best winter car that you can buy. Bar none. Bar none. And I've driven in some pretty ugly snow in that vehicle, and I'll tell you, that thing just the 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 person that i bought that vehicle from that 98 honda crv from five years ago had a jeep and they said with a set of winter tires on the honda the honda was better in snow than the jeep <laughs> so there you go so that's what i would suggest you buy uh bobby i was practicing my dad's today but he was trying to make me perfectly centered and bobby that's okay for practicing that you want to try and get it as best you can and get it centered in the in the parking space but for the purposes of your driver's test, no, you really don't, okay? Uh, Naweed, Merze, Merze, I'm not saying that right. I do apologize. I'm a new subscriber. Uh, you learned a lot so far. Awesome, and welcome to the Smart Drive Test community. We're so glad that you're here, and uh, anything, you have any questions or whatnot, definitely help us out. Uh, Sky, Jeep Wranglers are my favorite cars, and that's awesome, Sky. So you got to get your license so you can get yourself a Jeep Wrangler. That's brilliant. Uh, okay, I think we're pretty much caught up here. Excellent. Okay, so fifth knowledge, I passed my CDL test the first time, but I had to humor the test instructor a lot. He loved talking about himself constantly. I resented his attitude, but made it through the test. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, knowledge on passing your driver's test, your CDL driver's test. Uh, do you have a, a license test lined up? And actually, it's kind of funny that you were talking about that the driving examiner was talking about him or herself incessantly uh, because we were talking about that earlier at the beginning of the live stream with Margaret about, you know, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression and some driving examiners are indeed biased, uh, you know, and there just isn't there isn't anything you can do about it so you know you got to do what you got to do to pass as long as you can pass that's all you need all right uh dc is the crv all-wheel drive uh dc i think the new ones are all-wheel drive this old one my old uh, crv is what's called real-time four-wheel drive so essentially once it detects wheel spin then it kicks in the four-wheel drive is what it does okay Mohammed, uh, when should you do if you forget the speed of the area you're driving in a road test? Okay, excellent question, Mohammed. Uh, Corey will put the link for the frequently asked questions over at the Smart Drive Test website, or you can just go over there and go up to the menu item uh, for frequently asked questions. Go to your state or province, and it will tell you in those series of questions what the posted speed limit is in the city or on the highway if... Um, unless otherwise posted. For example, in many cities in the United States, the posted the speed limits 
inside the city is going to be 30 miles an hour unless otherwise posted. So if you don't know what the speed sign is, then you're going to do 30 miles an hour. Okay. But head over there, frequently ask questions and have a look and see what it is for your state or province. Okay. Uh, Sky, I take my test on the mar on the 5th of March. I will let you guys know how it goes. That's awesome, Sky. We look forward to hearing how you're doing there. Uh, Margaret left turns on two-way roads with floating parking. Uh, how do you see oncoming traffic? Uh, Margaret, you just you basically just got to creep out until you can see, and until you can see, then you can't proceed. Is basically what you need to do. Okay. So Corey's put the link up for the frequently asked questions there. Thanks for doing that, Corey. Awesome. Manure, uh, manure, where to go? There you go. Uh, would it be good to use driver simulator lessons prior to going on a practice for a driving test? Uh, no, I don't, simulators just don't work, okay? Uh, I'm not saying that they don't work for jet pilots, they do, but you have to understand that the simulators for airline pilots are hundreds of thousands of dollars whereas a simulator in a driving school is like three thousand dollars right there just isn't the same amount of technology and money that goes into these so these simulators just don't work i'm not saying that you're not going to learn anything but the best way to learn how to drive a car is to actually get in the car and drive it on the road okay uh julius uh thanks for making this content you helped me pass my driver's test in august 2019 Thank you so much, Julius, for dropping back and letting us know. How has the driving been going since that time, since pre-pandemic, <laughs> pre-crazy world? Uh, Kirsten, my test is coming up this week, but I still feel a little nervous and like my gas is uneven when I drive, like I'll be 40, 50 kilometers an hour, then 38. All right, so Kirsten, uh, Corey will put the video for you on speed control. Definitely have a look at that, and uh, that'll help you out with that as well, Okay. Uh, Sky, I live in California. When I approach an intersection like a green light or an intersection with no stop sign on my side, should I slow down, speed up, or continue at the same pace I'm going? So, Sky, you don't want to slow down. You just, as you're driving, you just want to be looking far down the road and scanning the intersections well in advance, just looking for hazards and obstructions. No, you don't want to slow down. Just continue at the same speed. All right. Two, I will take my test on March 5th. Okay. Good luck on that. You're going to do awesome. Ivan, hey Rick, uh, which vehicles have the right of way when all directions of traffic have a blinking red light? Okay, so when all directions of traffic, Ivan, have a blinking red light, it's the same rules as a four-way stop. So the first person to arrive, vehicle on the right, and then uh, straight through traffic over turning traffic, and then right turning traffic over left turning traffic. Okay. Uh, Merze, I started driving practice recently with no experience before. I'm a bit nervous. Also, the instructor makes me more nervous when I make a mistake. Uh, that's unfortunate uh, because learning how to drive in the vehicle should be a safe space and it shouldn't be, shouldn't be something that the driving examiner or instructor is going to make you more nervous. That's, that's unfortunate. Uh, Lawrence, I finally passed my road test here in Port Coquitlam. Thank you for your tips. Lawrence, you're most welcome. Thank you for dropping back and letting us know that you passed. Congratulations. That is awesome. And Corey's put up the video on how to control the gas pedal and the speed of your vehicle. And so this is, I uh, forget who I was talking to. <laughs> Lots of people, very busy, very busy tonight. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, Ben, I'm almost 40 and now our driver for the first time in my life. I'm very proud of myself for passing too. Excellent. Yes, and Ben has passed his road test. That's awesome. And Ben is a great example of one of the smart drivers in our community here. Uh, he was unsuccessful a couple of times but kept going and finally got his license on the third attempt there in Minnesota where they have heaps and heaps of snow. Heaps of snow. Uh, Trudes, uh, is it okay to just take the road test or do I have to do the full course if decided to go to driving school? Uh, no, Trude, you should be able to get a driving school that will just do a mock road test for you. You don't have to do a full course. You shouldn't have to do a full course. If you do, just go to another driving school. But know that if you're going to book a mock driving test, book it approximately three weeks in advance, okay? Because it's going to take you a bit to kind of get in because they're very busy, okay? Uh, Goose, excellent advice there. There are no mistakes unless you don't learn anything from them. Absolutely. If you can learn from them, then you're going to move forward, okay? Uh, blessed, I have a Nissan Versa hatchback. Can you suggest best brand of tires, please? 
Uh, blessed, I am very much a Michelin fan. I like Michelin tires. They handle well. They ha provide good suspension. Uh, they're just my personal favorite. Now, that's not to say that there aren't other good tires out there. And blessed, what I would suggest to you is to just look at some of the reviews uh, online here. So, uh, you know, but kind of Michelins are my thing. So that's my personal favorite is Michelin tires. Uh, and you can go on the Michelin website and you can just type in the year and the model and make of your vehicle and they'll recommend tires for you that you can put on your vehicle. Okay. And if you want any more information, blessed, just send me an email and I'll definitely help you out with that. Kirsten, uh, when I turn right onto a busy street from a private property, I cut too close to the curb out of fear of the cars coming in the opposite lane. Okay, so Kirsten, you just got to drive straight out farther. That's what you need to do. Okay. Uh, Kirsten Barley, I have my road test in Victoria tomorrow. I've been watching your videos. Awesome. Good luck on that tomorrow. That's awesome. Joshua, hey Rick, does taking a road test only from driving school help on the insurance cost? Uh, Joshua, it's going to depend which state or province you're in, whether that's going to help you out or not with your insurance. Uh, ben, should I get a front wheel drive or an all wheel drive? Uh, ben, all wheel drive is probably going to be better, but front wheel drive will do you just fine uh, and do well for you. Okay, Sarah, you have your driving test tomorrow morning at 9.15. You're going to do well, okay? Uh, any advice? Uh, make sure that Sarah, Corey will put up the video on pre-trip inspection. Make sure that you do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle uh, before you head down there because you don't want to be denied your test because you've got a brake light out or whatnot, okay? Julius, mildly curious as to your advice to defensive driving. What's something that a lot of people don't know about defensive driving that is very useful in a pinch? Uh, Julius, space management. Absolutely, space management is the key to defensive driving. If you can manage space around your vehicle well, uh, that is going to keep you safe on the roadways and especially in front of your vehicle. And there's a video here. Corey will put that up for you on space management. Have a look at that. That'll help you out. And for those of you who are having a bit of anxiety or, or trepidation about driving, have a look at the video Corey just posted on nine tips on fear and anxiety. Uh, Julie Smiley's curious. Okay, so you posted that. Thank you. Blessed, have a great week. Okay, and I think we've come to the end. It's been a really busy, great live stream tonight. Uh, thank you everybody for all your questions, all part of the Smart Driver community. If you're watching on the replay, leave us a comment down in the comment section there and I'll do the best I can to answer your questions. If I haven't answered your question here tonight, leave a comment down in the comment section there and I'll do my best to get through them tonight and answer your questions to get you through your driver's tests and get you successful. So do what you can. We'll help you out. We'll ensure that you get your driver's license. Okay, so all of those who passed in the last couple of weeks, congratulations on passing your driver's test. For those of you who have a driver's test coming up in the next week or so, good luck on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.